Bismillah, salatu wa salam ala rasulullah amma ba'd. So the Shaykh now he goes into the chapter where he talks about the day of Ashura throughout history. What is the uh, what is the matter related to the day of Ashura in history before Islam? And he brings the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha where she says, An Aisha radiallahu anha qalat, kana yawmu Ashura تصومه قريش في الجاهلية وكان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يصومه في الجاهلية فلما قدم المدينة صامه وأمر بصيامه فلما فرض رمضان ترك يوم ترك يوم عشرة فمن شاء صامه ومن شاء ترك أخرجه البخاري والمسلم عائشة رضي الله عنها narrated that the day of عشرة was fasted by the Quraysh in the periods before Islam and Allah's Messenger وسلم, used to fast it before Islam. When he came to Medina, he fasted it and ordered it to be fasted. When Ramadan was obligated, he gave up the day of Ashura. So whoever wanted fasted it and whoever wanted left it. This is reported by Bukhari and Muslim. So there are some points which the Sheikh brings here that this hadith is evidence that the people of Jahiliya used to know about Ashura. People before Islam came, knew about Ashura. And it was a famous day among them. And they used to fast it. So they knew about Ashura. It was famous and they used to fast it also. The Prophet ﷺ used to fast it also. And continued fasting it before migrating. He did not command the people to fast it after Ramadan was legislated. This is the evidence of the sacredness of this day and the greatness of its status among the Arabs in the periods before Islam, before the sending of the Prophet ﷺ. Due to this, they used to cover the Kaaba on this day as is found in the hadith of Aisha anha, who said, كانوا يسومون عشرة قبل أن يفرد رمضان وكانوا يوما تستر فيه الكعبة. They used to fast Ashura before Ramadan was obligated and it was the day they covered the Kaaba. This is the Hadith of Bukhari. Then he brings the quote of uh, al qurtubi uh, which is which is the Hadith of Aisha shows that the legislation and status of fasting this day was known to them. Perhaps they based fasting it on the legislation of Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi musallam. Because they used to ascribe themselves to these prophets, meaning Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam, they used to the Quraysh they used to ascribe to them. So it is said that Imam al Qurtubi is saying that perhaps they based fasting on it, uh, fasting it on the legislation of Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam. Because they used to ascribe themselves to these prophets and based many of their rulings for Hajj and others than, other than that on them. So, what is derived from the gathering of evidences is that fasting Ashura was obligatory in the beginning after the migration of the Prophet ﷺ to Medina according to the correct opinion of the people of knowledge. The command to fast it is established by the hadith of Salama ibn al Akwa. Radiallahu anhu, he said, Abar al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rajulan min aslama an adzin an adzin fin nas. Man kana akala fal yasum bakiyata yomihi. Waman waman lam yakun akala fal yasum fa in al yoma yomu ashura. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered a man from the tribe of al from the tribe of Aslam to announce to the people whoever was eating then let him fast the rest of the day and whoever did not eat then let him fast for today is the day of Ashura. This is reported by Bukhari and Muslim. So the next point that the Sheikh brings is when Ramadan was made obligatory in the second year of Hijrah the obligation to fast Ashura was abrogated. But it remained as recommended. So it was not obligatory, it became uh, recommended. 
The command to fast the day of Ashura was only for one year and that was the second year of Hijrah when it was obligated in the beginning of that year. Then Ramadan was obligated after half of that year passed. At the end of his life, in the 10th year, the Prophet ﷺ determined not to fast it by itself, but to fast the ninth day along with it. Which the Sheikh says will be uh, discussed in detail in the coming chapters. This is an instance of differing with the people of the book in the way that they fasted. So the people of the book, they would fast the 10th day, which is the Ashura. So to differ from them, the Prophet ﷺ said, if I am alive next year, I would fast the 9th day along with the 10th to differ from the people of the book. With this, the Shaykh completes this chapter and he states this dua, O Allah, the one who is not harmed by acts of disobedience and is not benefited by acts of obedience, grant us repentance and turning to you O oh Allah, deal with us with your forgiveness and favor us with your bounty and excellence. O oh Allah, make us among those who rely upon you and you suffice them. Seek guidance from you and you guide them. Seek assistance from you and you assist them. Those who humble themselves to you, so you had mercy on them. Oh, and forgive us, O oh Allah, our parents and all the Muslims. وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين